So Gaynor, why are we up here? What are we doing? Well, we're uh, looking at the Camera Obscura and uh, also the lighthouse, but we're also looking at the sea state um, to see uh, what it looks like because we're going to be going out tonight. <laughs> This is the channel into Douglas Harbour. Fortunately, it usually has a bit more water in it than it does right now. But you can see the deepest part of the channel, down the middle, and you can see all the mud and rocks, particularly near the entrance, that you've got to avoid. So tonight we're going to be setting off to Whitehaven and it's going to be a journey done in two stages and we thought what we'd do is we'd go over our thinking on how we plan a journey like this because the weather's not too bad, but the sea conditions are forecast to be a bit of a bumpy side. So we thought we'd just go over this before we start and take you through it. So where are we going to start? Okay, well we're going to start in um, Ramsey. Douglas. Well, <laughs> well, we're going to start in Douglas, um, which is in the middle of uh, the Isle of Man. And then we're going to go up to the mooring boys that we saw in um, Ramsey um, when we went um, for the survey. So um, once we're in Ramsey on the mooring boys we're going to go across to Whitehaven uh, which is just here. The reason we're going to do this in two stages is in around um, the Isle of Man, tide is everything. Um, and um, if you want to come into um, Ramsey, then you want to be taking the tide that brings you into Ramsey, which That's um, Douglas. is we're going to be leaving uh, Douglas on high water. And then the tide very close into the Isle of Man. Um, It'll carry us up. It will carry us up. To Ramsey. To Ramsey. Um, but then we have to wait in Ramsey until low, low water, tide. Until yeah. low tide. Um, and then once we're on the low tide, the currents then start sending you out. And uh, one of our way markers is this one, which is um, Bahama Cardinal. Bahama Cardinal. Um, from the uh, trip that we took in the electric train, um, we went to see these mooring buoys, which are here just at the end of the pier. And looking at the pier, because um, we're going to be mooring at night. Uh, there is a flashing red beacon which has got a five second interval. It's four meters above the ground and it has a five meter visibility. Five nautical miles. Five nautical miles. Okay, so it's got five nautical miles visibility. Um, now that's different from the two which are at the end of the um, uh, harbour which are quick red. They're eight metres above the um, chart datum and they can be seen for 10 nautical miles. Yes, yeah, so in other words, we're going to see that quick red and quick green long before we see, see the, the other red. red. Yeah, um, and um, from our um, recce, we know that the mooring boys are just here in around the um, 1.7 metre line. So it's going to be a bit on the risky side because our boat is 1.6 metres. But because of the tide, we should still be fine because, um, you know, as we should be okay there. Uh, but it's still going to be a little bit risky at the 1.7 metres. Our boat's 1.6. <laughs> Keel. <laughs> this is five hours before high water at Dover, so this is effectively low tide. And as you can see... At low tide, the currents come round the top of the Isle of Man, and it's a spring tide, so they'll be giving us at least 
two knots of current. We don't really want to be going against that. So by leaving here at what is effectively low water at Douglas, and we couldn't get out of the harbour at low water because of the tidal flap, we'll get two knots of current taking us across this way toward Whitehaven. Now it's a 50 mile journey roughly, so it'll take us eight or nine hours to do it. At some point the tide will change, but at various times over, I mean if we look at another bit just before low water, you can see that the the, the current is actually strengthened in this area here and it's at 3.2 knots in an easterly direction and it'll get up to 3.4 knots so we're going to get a lot of assistance going across we could hit 8 or 9 knots speed over ground on this particular route and that would shorten our passage time to about 6 hours which would be wonderful so eventually when we get to high water the currents will have swapped and they will be going slightly northwards, which is good because if we come on an easterly line, these northward currents will actually sweep us up to Whitehaven, which is about here. So on this passage, if we leave Ramsey at low water, the currents should carry us more or less all the way to Whitehaven. My next job was to listen to the inshore waters forecast by the UK Coast Guard, which I write onto a pre-prepared sheet I have printed off. Then we got the high and low water tide times for Douglas, Ramsey and Whitehaven to make sure we were going to be in the right places at the right time. After all the planning was complete, there was time to go for one last walk around Douglas before we set off in the evening. The overnight sail from Douglas to Ramsey went very smoothly, although we couldn't film it because it was indeed pitch black. The next morning we were greeted with a lovely sunrise in Ramsey Bay and we decided to make some breakfast before setting off. Gaynor decided she would try catching breakfast, which was a bit unusual because Gaynor has no idea how to fish. Well, I'm off the uh, coast of um, Ramsey, just um, moored up by the pier. And, uh, Bev's just having a kit before we start the sail across to um, Whitehead. So I thought, I know what I'll do for half an hour. I'll fish. What am I thinking of? I haven't a clue how to do it. <laughs> Not a clue. Oh, golly. I've got a brand new rod. And uh, I've got my hooks. But I've no idea. Golly. Never mind, I've got to try. Well, I've got this trace, which I didn't even know was multiple hooks. Um, but anyway, I think they're supposed to be shrimp, but I've got some dead old chicken, so I've added that. I, I, I really don't think I know how to fish. Well, I have managed to sling my hook, but it's not right, let's be honest. It's really ridiculous. And now I realise that I've got to bring it back all in again because this is the time that Bev wanted me to wake her up. Well, Bev um, came up to have a look at my fishing and she just said, What in heck's name have you done? Apparently, you're not allowed, you're not supposed to put bait on a multiple trace line. I did. But never mind, and uh, you put the weight at the bottom, I'd got it at the top of the trace. Anyway, it was what's commonly known as a bit of a... Uh, not good. <laughs> never mind. <sighs> I brought it up. It's clear, I think I'd have to have my very first fishing lesson. A little bit of swell this morning. Caps, but nothing too. 